Amidst the rapid economic downturn in China, while everyone focuses on the persistently high youth unemployment rate, middle-aged individuals are also increasingly facing unemployment. These middle-aged individuals born between 1979 and 1989 are now aged between 35 and 45. They typically support their aging parents and young children and often have car loans, mortgages, and tuition fees. Many families have two working adults supporting four elderly parents and one child. If the wife does not work, one person supports six others. Compared to youth unemployment, middle-age unemployment is a more critical issue that requires societal attention. This group desperately needs to feel hopeful. Although middle-age unemployment might not be as severe as youth unemployment, China is already facing a widespread unemployment wave. Unlike young people who might choose to lie flat or rely on parents, middle-age individuals also face discrimination from the 35-year-old threshold in the job market. I lost my job and didn't know what to do. I suddenly have no source of income. I have three daughters who are still studying at school and have considerable living expenses. My wife's job is unstable, and I am under too much pressure right now. I looked at some jobs and submitted resumes, but there were few replies. A big reason is that I am too old now, 42 years old, so I can only get into a few jobs. This society is realistic and cruel. There is little space left for middle-aged men like us. I am baffled now. This is the first time I've been so confused. I am just fine thinking about my children who are still so young. I don't know what to do next. I will adjust myself while watching for opportunities. How should I put it? I hope everything will get better. I have been laid off with a severance package of 100,000 RMB from the company. I no longer have any relationship with them. This family once earned 200,000 RMB a year, but as my wife and I lost our jobs, everything went back to zero. After being laid off, I am no longer manager Fang. I graduated from a 211 university with a master's degree and worked as a senior engineer, earning over 10,000 RMB or 1,400 monthly. I often had to work overtime and order takeout frequently. Today marks my 3,185th day at the company and the layoff caught me off guard. The mask era COVID-19 pandemic was tough for three years, but this year is even harder. Money is increasingly hard to earn and we still have a mortgage to pay with a child in elementary school. I have worked for over 10 years, always as an outstanding employee, yet I couldn't escape this fate. There's no room for ordinary people. They cut salaries and lay off when they want, and employees have no say. I've been browsing several job sites to see any good opportunities, but the options are delivery drivers or couriers. At this age, it's awkward. I can't stay up late often due to health reasons, can't travel frequently due to family commitments, and lack the learning drive of fresh graduates. At 44, I don't dare to start over. Last year, both my wife and I received substantial year-end bonuses. But this year, we are both unemployed. Such is life. It hits you hardest when you're at your peak. My wife wants to sell the house and return to our hometown, but after more than a decade away, can we go back as we think? Selling the house is challenging too, and starting over in our hometown would still require effort. Do ordinary people really have any choice? Where should our family go from here? China is experiencing a wave of unemployment primarily due to a large-scale withdrawal of foreign investment and the shift of industrial chains to India and Southeast Asia. In the third quarter of 2023, China's foreign direct investment turned negative for the first time in 25 years, meaning more funds left China through foreign withdrawals than entered it through investment. At its peak in 2013, net foreign direct investment in a single quarter reached as high as $110 billion. But by the third quarter of 2023, this number had turned negative by 11.8 billion. The impact of foreign companies withdrawing includes layoffs of white-collar workers in first- and second-tier cities. Moreover, the withdrawal of foreign investment has triggered a series of chain reactions because many of these large foreign enterprises rely on Chinese suppliers. When they leave, their suppliers also suffer, leading to a wave of large-scale layoffs. The shift of industrial chains also means factory closures, affecting a large number of blue-collar workers in second- and third-tier cities. When these middle-aged, unemployed individuals seek new jobs, they encounter what's known as the age 35 threshold and age 35 curse. These terms have gained widespread attention in China in recent years, referring to the difficulty job seekers over 35 face in the labor market. 
Even China's largest recruitment platform, Baoshi Pin, explicitly states in some job postings that it does not want employees over 35. In fact, the age 35 threshold has long existed in various Chinese government departments, effectively a documented form of discrimination. In June 1994, China's Provisional Regulations on the Recruitment of Civil Servants stipulated that applicants for national civil service positions must be under 35 years of age. In 2019, the Central Organization Department of China revised the regulations on the recruitment of civil servants, requiring that civil service applicants be over 18 and under 35 years old. Many Chinese state-owned enterprises and private enterprises have similarly set an age limit for recruitment that does not exceed 35. I just had an interview for a job that pays 3,500 RMB or 480 USD per month, but I was rejected outright. This was the 10th company I've interviewed with this year, and the fourth rejection was due to my age. It's disheartening. Just three years ago, I had a job paying 20,000 RMB per month, and now nobody wants me for a 3,500 RMB job. I was born in 1985, and I'm 39 years old. Before losing my job, I worked as a consultant at a financial company, which sounds impressive, but actually required no technical skills. Almost anyone could do it. After losing my job, I heard that delivery food could earn over 10,000 RMB a month, so I started doing deliveries. I gave up in less than six months. I was out every morning at 8 a.m. and didn't return until 11 p.m. After subtracting the cost of renting a car, I made over 5,000 RMB, 680 a month which wasn't high considering the risks. Several times I was hit and thrown several meters. The worst was when I was thrown about 5 or 6 meters and it took half an hour to get up. Now I'm 39 with elderly parents and young children to support. Last year my father was hospitalized and they paid for everything themselves. I couldn't contribute financially and now that I have no income, companies reject me because I'm too old. I have a lot of debt and sometimes feel like giving up, but I can't. I'm still a father, a son, and a husband, so I have to keep going. I have to keep trying. This is the life of a 39-year-old and middle-aged man, and it isn't very comfortable. I'm not looking for sympathy. I'm sharing this so others in similar situations can persevere and get through tough times together. Today I went for interviews again. I interviewed with three companies, and all of them rejected me, saying that 35 is too old. A friend introduced me to one of the companies. He told me that they wouldn't have even considered someone over 35 if it wasn't for his introduction. It's ironic. Luckily, I'm single without children, a home or a car. I don't know if saying this is a good or bad thing now. Overall, it just feels very ironic. Xiamen is a city with high living costs but low wages. I am considering working in a factory. There are still some factories in Xiamen, all right, but it will be my first time working there. If I do end up in a factory, it might be the rest of my life. A midlife crisis at 35 is really tough. I don't know how many people like me who can't find a job at 35. Some people might even have mortgages and car loans. Ironically, such a big city, but it doesn't have a place for me. In 2023, Starbucks became a hotspot topic in China, filled with unemployed middle-aged men and women. This behavior is referred to as pretending to work online. They always appear during regular working hours, find an inconspicuous corner, open their laptops, and search for jobs online into the end of the workday and then leave quietly. They don't dare tell their families, fearing that their loved ones, especially elderly parents and young children, will worry about losing their source of income. They also don't want relatives and friends to know about their unemployment, fearing they will look down on them. So every day they leave the house as if they are going to work. It's not just Starbucks, cheaper coffee shops or free libraries are even more crowded with people pretending to work. For the unemployed, these places no longer carry the pride of past professional achievements, but provide a rare moment of respite they've longed for. 
Have you ever experienced a day of pretending to work in Guangzhou? Today, follow my camera to see how pleasant it really is. Leaving the house at 8 a.m., I step out of the cold urban village, squeeze into the most crowded subway line in Guangzhou, Line 3, and get off at Zhuijiang New Town Station, the central business district of Guangzhou. I then head to the Guangzhou Library, take out my laptop, and start my day's work. The so-called work mainly involves browsing various job sites for job listings. After searching all morning, I still couldn't find a suitable job. For lunch, I go to the first floor of the library, order two simple vegetable dishes, and spend 16 yuan or $2.20. This is probably the cheapest place to eat, and it's quite a bargain in such an expensive area. After a satisfying lunch, I return to the library, find a luxurious five-star recliner, and take a nap in the air-conditioned comfort until 3 p.m. After waking up feeling parched, I drink some free purified water, then head to the library's free internet area to surf the web for two hours. The view outside the window is quite poetic, making it seem like I'm working in a high-end office building here. Next, I catch up on the news and some TV dramas. At 5.30 p.m., I quickly pack up and prepare to go home. I join the rush of people and squeeze back onto Line 3, ending another fake day of work. Nowadays, more and more people in Guangzhou are pretending to work. Some spend the whole day in the library playing on their phones and computers, while others sit in McDonald's or Starbucks from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. with a laptop in front of them but no sound. These people leave early and return late every day. Not only do they pretend to work, but they also hand over a portion of their salary to their families on time. This might be a short period of unemployment. Whether they left their jobs voluntarily or were forced to, many people quietly endure the bitterness of unemployment, hiding this experience from their families due to pressure or concern. Behind every group of people pretending to work are many individuals struggling to survive in the current social situation. Some of them are young, while others have families. Everyone agrees that finding a job this year is particularly difficult. If you were unemployed, would you lie flat or pretend to work? In addition, middle-aged women in China face not only age discrimination but also gender discrimination when job hunting. Chinese women in their 30s are often asked about their fertility plans during job interviews, as employers worry they might soon take maternity leave or a long-term leave for childbirth. A survey conducted by Jiaopin.com, one of China's largest online recruitment platforms, found that 61.1% of women were asked about their marriage and fertility plans during job interviews and 51.1% of female respondents said that age affected their career prospects. A 2021 report by Human Rights Watch stated that since the Chinese authorities abolished the one-child policy, questions related to women's fertility status have become unavoidable during job interviews. The report also noted that some employers impose fines or penalties on pregnant employees. In other cases, companies might make the work environment so difficult that pregnant employees feel compelled to resign. Although Chinese law prohibits discrimination based on gender and pregnancy and employment, experts say these laws provide minimal enforcement mechanisms, allowing companies to ignore the regulations continuously. I'm 37 years old, single, without children, a home, a car or savings. Today, my boss informed me that the company was going bankrupt and advised me to start making plans early. I must be the most unsuccessful person among those born in the 80s. Many people might wonder why I have nothing at 37. Honestly, I don't know how I ended up like this. I haven't always been this unsuccessful. Although I didn't make much before, it was enough to live in Beijing. However, in 2018, I trusted a good friend and made a wrong investment, losing all the money I had saved in Beijing over the years and even incurred some debt. At that time, I was about to get married, but my then-boyfriend chose to leave me because of my debt. That was probably the lowest point in my life. I couldn't accept it and ended up with depression. For a year or two, I was completely detached from society, constantly seeking treatment and trying to recover. Eventually, I gradually improved, re-entered society, and worked hard to pay off my debt. Just when things seemed to be improving, I was notified that the company was going bankrupt. Initially, I wasn't too anxious when my boss told me, but then I opened the job search app and saw numerous job postings. 
I realized that they all had an age limit of 35. At 37, I'm married and without children. I have no market value, and I suddenly became very anxious. After returning home, I cried for a long time in the rental house and suddenly wondered how my life had become like this. I had worked so hard, but why couldn't I live a good life? I used to comfort myself with the phrase, things will get better, and it got me through year after year. Now I'm suddenly baffled. Will things really get better? If they do this time, what about next time? I feel an overwhelmingly sense of panic and anxiety. I remember someone saying that some people are born to enjoy life. They stand there doing nothing, and their lives go smoothly. But some people are destined to struggle, and no matter how hard they try, they can't get the life they want. Maybe I'm one of those destined to struggle. From childhood to now, I've rarely had good luck, but in the end, I still have to live. You can't just say goodbye to the world because life isn't going well. So crying is just a way to vent emotions. When I wake up tomorrow morning, I still have to face reality. At worst, I can deliver food or packages. As long as I don't starve, I can survive. Today, I interviewed for a job that pays 8,000 yuan or $1,100 a month. The result made me laugh. I was rejected again because of my age. I earned more than 20,000 yuan a few months ago, but now no one wants me even for 8,000 yuan. I was born in the 1980s, and I'm 38 years old. I'm just stuck at this age. Work finds me too old, but retirement finds me too young. I've been working in the real estate industry for over a decade, constantly working overtime creating endless reports and data analysis, and attending morning, evening, weekly, and monthly meetings. Endless meetings. I'm proficient in all aspects, from dealing with clients to leading teams in bidding, sales management, and planning. I never imagined that one day I would be unemployed and unable to find a job even paying 8,000 yuan. When I first lost my job last year, I leisurely stayed at home, thinking I deserve a break after all these years. I never expected the situation to become so bad. People say, you've worked for so many years, you must have savings. Well, that's another story. Indeed, I should have had savings. But due to various issues in my original family and the high-priced school district home I bought in 2020, I have no savings left. Not only do I have no savings, but I also have a debt of 1 million yuan. They say that 30 is the age to establish oneself, and 40 is the age of no doubts. But I collapsed between 30 and 40, unsure of where the road leads. <laughs>